Uh, and we're going to start with practice number two. Down Under Boomerang is considering investing in a three-year expansion project that requires an initial fixed asset investment of $2.43 million. The fixed asset will be depreciated straight line to zero over its three-year tax life. The project is estimated to generate $1.99 million in annual sales with costs of $685,000. The project requires an initial investment in working ca networking capital of $210,000. And the fixed asset will have a market value of 305000 at the end of the project. Okay, first thing I want to do with a problem like this is figure out uh, how many years. We know this thing has a three-year life, but how many years will I actually be looking at? Yeah, I'm going to be looking at zero, one, two, and three. Now, the next question is this. We know that your zero is going to be different because we have our increase in networking capital, we have our net capital spending, and we don't have any um, uh, operating cash flow. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say we're going to have one column for year zero. And we know that year three is going to be different because it's going to have the reduction in networking capital and it's going to have the after-tax salvage value. So we're going to have a separate column for it. But what about years one and two? Are they any different? No. Oh, so we're going to save ourselves a lot of time and suffering, and we're just going to say one and two, and then we're going to have a column for year three. And for each of these, we want to have the operating cash flow, the net capital spending, and the change in net working capital. And if you recall, what we're going to do is say uh, operating cash flow minus the net capital spending minus the change in net working capital. And what's that going to give us? Cash flow for us. Oh, very good. I was getting ready to call on you because you were being chatty, but you were uh, ahead of me there. So thank you. <laughs> now you know the secret. OK, so let's start by talking about year zero. Is there ever any operating cash flow in year zero? Nope. Now, what about net capital spending? Remember, net capital spending is a spending is a positive number if the money's going out. That's why we're going to have to subtract it. So here we're going to put a positive sign on this. How much is going out then? 2.4. Yeah, 2.43 million. 2,430,000. Now, what happens to net working capital at time zero? I'll give you a hint. The project requires an initial investment of what? Yeah, so it's going to go up by 210000 And once again, um, that's a positive sign. It's going up. But we're going to subtract that when we get done here. In fact, let's go ahead and figure this out. I think. We've got zero minus 2.43 million minus 0.21 million. I think we have minus 2,640,000 bucks. Does that look right? Okay. Now, for years one and two and three, we're going to have operating cash flow, but we don't know the operating cash flow yet, so we're going to have to figure it out. So we're looking at the incremental values here. What is the incremental increase in sales as a result of this project? One million nine hundred ninety thousand. That's our sales. What's our incremental cost? Six eighty-five. Six eighty-five. Okay. Okay. Now there's something else that we have to subtract before we can find our pre-tax income. Does anybody know what it is? Uh, depreciation. Yeah, very good. Okay, so we're gonna have to put depreciation in here, but we don't know depreciation yet. They tell us that this thing is 2.43 million, and how is it depreciated? Straight line. Straight line to? Zero. Over the, which year life? Three. Three. So what we're really looking for depreciation-wise is 2.43 million divided by three, which I believe is 810,000. Ms. Volkova, is that correct? Very good. I know I can ask her because she and I are the only ones in the room who can do math in our heads. Most of the time. Yeah, hey, occasionally I screw up too. 
Uh, feel free to put that in your calculator and then make fun of me if I've got it wrong. <laughs> okay, so here we go, 810,000. Now, we're going to, by the way, subtract cost, subtract depreciation to come up with our pre-tax income. So, can anyone give me one, uh, do this math here, 1,990,000. Let's see if I can do this in my head. One, one, seven, oh. Okay, I've got a number in my head, but someone tell me what it is. 495,000. Very good, I was wrong. <laughs> or I was wrong. Okay, well, can someone confirm her number, please? Yeah. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay. Now, what can we calculate now that we know pre-tax income? Okay, but we actually have to figure out, uh, oh, they tell us the tax rate, 24%, right? So can anyone tell me what 24% of this pre-tax income is? Does that sound right? Okay. Now, we know, do we actually, do we have to take it any farther than this? What we, uh, we know that OCF is equal to EBIT minus uh, taxes plus depreciation. Where do I find EBIT up here in all these numbers? Pre yeah, it's pre-tax income because there's no interest involved here, right? Okay, so it's just earnings before taxes, basically. So what we're going to do is say 495000 minus the taxes of 118800 And then we're going to add back our depreciation of 810000 bucks. Why am I adding back depreciation? That's a non-cash expense, right? That wasn't really cash going up. By the way, that's, I'm going to try putting another zero in there so you can see it. There we go. Okay. So, can, let's see, 505,000, 1.305 million minus that. Can someone tell me what that number is, please? Oh, very good. So, that's correct? Yeah. Okay. Where does that go on my chart over here? Operating cash flow. Very good. 118. Six two zero zero one one eight six two zero zero. Can anyone tell me what the net capital spending in years one and two is? Yeah, it's nothing. Right? <laughs> That's like your question. No, 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 no. And what about the change in networking capital? Zero. Yeah, zero. Okay. So now, what do we know? Oh, so we can go ahead and do this. One million one hundred eighty-six thousand two hundred. Now we know we have changes for both net capital spending and networking capital here at the end. The easy one is networking capital. What's going to happen to networking capital at the end? Subtract. Yeah, it's got to go back to zero, and so basically it's just the opposite. Okay. Now, uh, we've got to figure out how much money we're going to get out of this pig when we sell it. And they've told us that it's going to have a market value of $305,000 at the end of the project. Is that the amount of money that we're going to get? No, why not? The tax. Yeah, so what we've got to figure out is the after-tax salvage value. After-tax salvage value is equal to market value minus the tax rate times market value minus the book value. Okay, so in this case, the book value is zero, right? And so we're really just looking at market value times one minus the tax rate. Can you see that mathematically? Okay, one minus the tax rate is 0 0.76. So we're looking at 305,000 times 0 0.76. Can someone tell me what that number is? Oh my goodness. So to say that one more time. So it's going to be about three quarters of this. So we're looking at something in the 200,000 range. 231. How much? 231. 231, how much? 800. 800, very good. Thank you. 
try to develop a feel for what numbers should be, right? Yeah. Because this is the problem with you guys being trained on calculators. You don't have an instinctive feel for what numbers should be. Okay, 231,800, and by the way, that's negative spending, right? That's money back in. Okay, so for this last cash flow, we're going to take this number, minus minus this number, yeah, and this number is a minus minus, so say it again, Ms. Bowman, plus. plus this number. So we're just going to basically add those numbers together. How much? I sure hope it's 1.628 million. It is? Okay. Okay, now we have all these numbers. Can anyone tell me where we're going to go on the calculator to find the net present value? CF, hit CF, second, clear work. CF, second, clear work. Did you not bring your calculator today, Mr. Green? Mm -hmm. Mr. Green, you disappoint me. I know. Okay. Okay, so um, CF, second, clear work. What am I going to put in for CF0? Yeah, so put in 202.64 million and hit that plus minus button, and then what do you have to hit? Enter. Enter, very good, let's get that done. What are we gonna do next, Mr. Green? Even though you don't have it here, I know you know. What do we do next? Oh, damn, you're like six steps ahead of us. He's, he's living in the future. Okay, how about arrow down? Oh, right. yeah, there you go. Okay, so now your calculator says C01 equals, what do you type in there? C0, C1. C1, yeah. So we're going to put uh, 186200 and then you're going to hit enter. And then, I'm going to give Mr. Green another shot here. What button do we hit next? Zero down. Yeah, very good, the arrow down. Now your calculator probably says F01. I sure hope it does. Now, here's the question. What do I put in for F01, Mr. Bowrector? Two. two, why two? Because it's for years one and two. Yeah, it's for years one and two. So put that in, and then you got to hit enter. And then, Mr. Osawawu, what button do I hit next? We hit the arrow down. Yeah, you hit the arrow down. So hit the arrow down, and now your calculator says C02. So what are we going to put in for C02? 1.628 million bucks, and then we're going to hit enter. Now, we don't have to do it, but you could hit arrow down here, and F02 would be how much? One. But it's already in there, so don't worry about doing that. Now, I'm going to get back to so Mr. Green was living in the future. Hopefully, he's caught up to us in the past now. Um, what button do I hit next? Uh, it's yeah, it's NPV. Uh, Very good. I, he's on fire. Okay, so you want to hit NPV. Now it says I equals, what do we put in for I? 18. 18, because it says the required return is 18%. So go ahead and put 18 in, hit enter, and what do I do now? Arrow down, Arrow down and then compute. compute. Very good. Arrow down, compute. What do you get? Yeah. Isn't that easy? Okay, so here's the deal. Did you see how much time that took? When you see a problem like this on the exam, what should you do? Skip it. Skip it. Come back when you know you've whipped out all the easy ones and you're feeling fresh and smart. Boom. Then you jump on stuff like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, uh, so I will cross these off as we go. Now someone's asked for number three. By the way, is it okay if I go ahead and erase this? Any objections? Is this the hardest chapter in the day on that? It depends on the individual. I'll tell you what chapter isn't the hardest one, that's chapter seven. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Yo oh, this is a lovely one. Your firm is contemplating the purchase of a new $575,000 computer-based order entry system. 
The system will be depreciated straight line to zero over its five year life. It will be worth $59,000 at the end of that time. You're going to save $265,000 before taxes per year in order processing costs. You'll be able to reduce your working capital by $74,000. And that's a one time reduction. You get your tax rate of 21%, and they want to know what is the IRR. Oh man, this is a great one. Okay, so uh, the first thing is how many years is this project? Five. Five, but how many years are we going to talk about? Six. So we know year zero is going to be different. NCF, uh, minus NCS, minus change, networking capital. Okay, we know your zero is going to be different because we have no operating cash flow. We have uh, net capital spending and we have a change in networking capital. And then we know year five is going to be different because we're going to have a change in networking capital. We're going to have uh, whatever we can sell this thing for. I don't know if we can, but we know that year five is going to be different. But what about years one through four? Same. Yeah, they're all the same. And so there's no reason for you to have six columns on your paper. No reason at all. Okay, now, net capital spending. How much are we going to spend? 575000 is that right? Okay, now, here's where it gets funky. What's going on with the networking capital? Usually when we do projects, at the beginning, networking capital goes up, right? Well, at the beginning. At the beginning, it usually goes up. In this case, what's going on? It actually goes down, right? This is an order processing system that supposedly, apparently, allows you to reduce your inventory because it's just so great, right? Okay, so what does that mean? It means this change in networking capital is actually minus 74,000 right here instead of plus. Does that make sense? Okay, that's usually what trips people up about this problem. Now, we know there's not a change in networking capital here. There's not a change in net capital spending here. Uh, but what about over here on the right-hand side? What has to happen? Yeah, it's got to be 74,000 to the positive, right? Because we know that these things, this whole has to equal zero. Has to. Okay, now net capital spending for year five here. Um, oh, it does say fit, worth 59000 at the end. We're going to have to figure out the after-tax salvage value. After-tax salvage value is equal to market value minus uh, taxes times market value minus book value. By the way, what do they say they're depreciating this thing to over its life? Zero. So what's marked by book value here? Zero. And so once again, we're basically looking at market value times 1 minus t, which is not always going to be the case because you could have a book value at the end like we did with our example in the class, the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so now they tell us the market value is how much? Yeah, 59,000. And what is our tax rate? 21%. 21%. So I think that is uh, 1 minus t is 0 0.79. Does that sound right? Okay, so what do we have for our after-tax salvage value here? 46,600. 46,600. Is that right? 610. 610. Ooh, very good. 610. Okay, now over here in net capital spending, that's actually money coming in. So what should the sign be on it? Negative, because it's negative spending. Negative, 46, 6, 10. All right. What is the one thing that we have to calculate that we haven't calculated yet? Okay, well, so we're going to do that. But in order to find that, we're going to have to find? Yeah, uh, yeah, OCF. Okay, so let's see what this thing is telling us it's going to do. It's telling us that it's going to save us 265000 a year before taxes. A lot of times people get freaked out because they say, well, wait a minute, where's the revenue? Folks, if I can avoid spending money, that's like revenue, right? 
If I could avoid paying my mortgage, I could avoid spending $1,589 a month. I know I have a cheap mortgage. I am so pleased. Okay, so probably less than some of your rent, right? Okay, so, uh, but if I can avoid paying that, then I've got that extra money that I don't have to spend. Okay, so now we're looking at 265000 and what do they say happens to the cost as a result of this project? Does, does anything happen to cost? No, sweet. Okay, so there's nothing we have to subtract out here as far as cost of goods sold or anything like that. What's the other thing I've got to subtract out before I can calculate? Yeah, I got to have depreciation. And so they said this thing costs 575,000. And how many years are we depreciating that over? Five. Uh, is that 115,000 depreciation? Okay, minus 115,000. Um, I believe that's 150,000 in my pre-tax income, yeah, pre income, right? Okay, so our tax rate is uh, 21%. Can someone tell me what 21% of 150,000 bucks is? 31,500. 31,500, very good. Okay, so now I have basically EBIT, I have taxes, and I have depreciation. Can I figure OCF? Yeah, it's just OCF is equal to EBIT, 150,000, minus the taxes of $31,500, plus depreciation of $115,000. Can someone tell me what that is? Four hundred thirty-three thousand. Two hundred thirty-three thousand five hundred. Does that look right to everybody else? Okay. So now we've got this number here: two thirty-three thousand five hundred. Two thirty-three thousand five hundred. And so now we can start doing some math here. So this is zero minus this plus this, so I think this is minus $501,000. Does that look right? Okay, now this one's really easy. On this one, we have 233,500 minus minus 46,610. So what is that, 279.0, no, 280.110? Yeah. 280, 110, and then minus 74. So was it 206, 110? Yeah. It's too real. You can't deny me, right? I'm gonna do this in my head. Now, as soon as I brag like that, you know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna screw it up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Okay, now, uh, what are we gonna do next? Say again? Yeah, put it in the calculator. Where am I going to stick it? Just anywhere? CF. CF. CF second, clear work. What is CF zero? Negative 500. Yeah, negative 500, 1,000, and then we've got to hit the enter button. And we've got to hit the enter button. Ms. Avila, what do we hit next? Uh, we've got to break the yeah. Oh, you didn't bring your calculator either. Oh! She was hiding it and just looking all innocent. Okay, so back to the story. Uh, so we're going to go down, and now C01, what are we going to put in for it? Mr. Green, what are we going to put in for C01? One. Oh, C01. C01. Uh, three, four, three, four. C01. 233 500. Very good. Uh, <laughs> 233 500. Pressure's real. <laughs> Hit enter. I'm going to give you a chance of redemption. What button do we hit next? Arrow down. Very good. Now, F01, what do we put in? Uh, four? Yeah, we put in four because it's years one, two, three, four. It happens four times in a row, right? Now, after you put in four, you're going to hit the enter button. And then, uh, Ms. Ware, what do we hit next? Arrow down. Very good, arrow down. And what do we put in for C02? 
Very good, 206,110, hit enter. Now, in order to calculate the IRR, what button do I hit, Mr. Osawagwu? Oh, very good. Hit IRR, and then what button do you have to hit after that, Ms. Volkova? I sh yeah, compute. Not all my questions to you are going to be hard. Right? <laughs> okay, so hit compute, and what do you get? 36.26%. So, what was the big trick here? This was the big trick. Networking capital went down at the beginning and up at the end. That's the big trick about this problem. Questions? The other thing is sometimes people freak out thinking that uh, uh, reducing costs <coughs> is not really revenue, but it is. You can treat it like revenue. Is there just one problem on the test, like two and three? Uh, there will be at most one problem on the test. Well, eh, eh. you can still get an A even if you don't do all. So, and here's how I could prove it to you. How many chapters are on the exam? Five. Five. And so that means how many questions from each chapter? How many questions are on the exam? Forty. Divide by five gives you eight. How many of those are going to be uh, quantitative? Four. Out of the four questions from chapter eight, how many of them do you think are going to be really complex like this? Maybe two? Maybe two. <laughs> but what if they're all? That's like 50%. Well, no, no, no. That's a lot. Out of, but out of 40. Yeah. Two out of 40 is 5%, yeah. folks. Y'all are freaking out over, over nothing. You yeah. can do a hard one on chapter seven. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> if we get to that, we will. Okay, questions? Okay. Now, let's see here. So we've done that one. And now someone says chapter, or uh, question 22. Bam. The initial cost of the machine is 727,000 with an annual operating cost of 39,600. Each machine has a life of five years before it is replaced. Uh, what the hell? Ignore taxes. Okay. What's the equivalent annual cost of this machine if the required return is 16%? So let's look at what our cash flows look like here. Here's zero. By the way, equivalent annual costs. So money going out is going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. Okay, so what are we spending at time zero? 727,000. And then, how long is the life of the machine? Five. Five years. Does it say anything about a salvage value? No, so we're gonna assume this thing dies worthless. Okay, so that means that years one through five are all the same. And annual operating costs are 39600 Now, you may see a problem on the exam that says the operating cash flow is negative something, right? That's exactly the same thing as saying the costs are that. So don't freak out. Okay, now we're trying to find the equivalent annual cost. What button should I hit on my calculator first? This minutes. Oh, you are stepping ahead just like Mr. Green did. CF. CF. Second, clear work. CF, second, clear work. What do we put in for CF zero? 727,000. Do we make it negative? No. Okay. Yeah, because it's a cost. This is a cost, this is a cost. Therefore, they're both the same sum. Not necessarily an investment. Well, it is. It's an investment, but we're looking at nothing but costs here. We're not looking at revenues. Uh, well, right? I'm sorry, we could just make everything negative. Anytime. You could, but here's why I don't do that. A, I'm lazy, and B, I make mistakes. Sure. Right? So if you're not lazy and you don't make mistakes, feel free. I, Mr. Sadai is probably the only person in here that is not lazy and, and doesn't make mistakes. To think it easy, to just yeah. think that's what it is. That's why we yep. got it. 
the button. You could do that. You okay. could certainly do that. Okay, now, um, arrow down. What do we put in for C01? This burdener. Very good. 39600. Hit enter. Arrow down. Miss Caviani, what are we going to use for F01? Five. Five. Why? Because there's five, five years. Yeah, we got five years in the same cash flow, right? Five. Enter. Now it's asking us for, we're trying to get to equivalent annual cost. What button do I have to hit next? Very good, NPV, hit NPV. And now, what are we gonna put in for I? 16. 16, enter. What button do I hit next, Mr. Taylor? No, I'm stuck on that one. You're stuck on that one. So you got the, you've hit the NPV, yeah. and you put in the 16. interest rate. Mm -hmm. Try hitting your down arrow and see what it says. NPV. Very good, okay, now, it's sitting there, probably saying zero or something, right? Do you think that's correct? No. no. There's little bitty words up at the top of the screen. What do they say? Compute. Compute. It's telling you what to do. Hit the compute. What do you get? Well, I got 856, 662. Okay, very good. Here's what I want you to do. Store one, just in case everything goes horribly, horribly wrong. Store one. Okay. Now I want you to hit second clear TVM. Uh, this is where Ms. Minnis was moments ago. Second clear TVM, and uh, then we're going to hit clear once. What does your screen say now? Clear, just like clear work. Yeah, just and down here. at the bottom. Oh, no. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to hit recall one. See, that's why we stored it. Recall one. And then, by the way, I could go ahead and make this negative, right? So negative, and then what button should I hit next? Yeah, present values. Hit PV. And now, what am I going to put in for N? Five, because that's the length of this project, five years. Uh, what do I put in for I over Y? Sixteen. And then, how do I compute the equivalent annual cost? Yeah, compute payment. What do you get? 261, 632, 62, right? Boom. There we go. I think I missed this step. So, what are you putting on the, uh, the keys? So okay, so we put in the present uh, 856,652.03 negative as present value. And then what do we put in for N? Five. Five. What do we put in for I over Y? 16. 16. That's the only, those are the only three things you need to put in there. And then what are we going to compute? Yeah. Yeah, compute the payment. Did you get it? I got 334. Oh, dude. Okay. Clear, second, or right, you second clear TV. Yeah, no, I did that. Okay. Now, hit recall one. What does your calculator say? 800 or 856,000. Okay, so go ahead and hit the negative button. And then hit PV. Okay. Now, what do you put in for N? It's, so it's 261. You got it this time? Okay. Other questions? Okay. 